And my friends, welcome to the program. You're watching Andrew Richter, the television show, 177th edition as we march forward here in uh, season five. I am the man that single-handedly keeps Comcast in business. You know how many people would switch over and get a satellite if I wasn't on television? Incredible. It even, even stops me from getting a dish because I can't watch myself. And Lord knows how much I love to hear myself talk. So today we're continuing our uh, discussions that we've had on previous shows. You've heard us talk a lot about transit, uh, about wastewater. We've talked about that before, about planning and all that kind of stuff. Well, here in the seven county metro area in the Twin Cities, uh, there is an agency which I call Minnesota's version of communism called the Metropolitan Council that basically are the unelected planners and I would argue dictators of our area. And we brought along our resident expert in local government, Mr. Jason Bradley, back to the program, sir. Good to be here again. Always a pleasure. And Absolutely. yes, you can stop sending in the emails to having Jason come back. We all know how popular he is. He's back here today. Um, talking about the Met Council, we're going to give you a whole half hour of Met Council stuff here. All the evil things they're cooking up, <laughs> how much of, of you know our money that they spend from wherever the hell it comes from. But Jason, why don't you tell us, uh, the Met Council, w where did it come from and why do we have it? Well, uh, back in 1967, our legislature signed into law the creation of the Metropolitan Council. Before that, there were about 200 different agencies at a local level that kind of worked with each other to figure out, okay, how do we name our streets? Do we continue, you know, the same thing? Regional planning type stuff. Uh, really the whole impetus for this, though, was around wastewater dealing with sump pumps and, and uh, pollution that occurred because of that. And the suburban growth. Yep. of the 50s and 60s, which was another, wasn't mm -hmm. planned out the best and, and people wanted uh, the, the, what we did with the water and sewage and how, it, how far it went and all that stuff to right. a catalyst. Right, so uh, in all of their wisdom, the uh, <laughs> Minnesota legislature decided that, well, we really need to oversee this because we can't trust the local governments to get it done correctly. And it, really, they wanted it done uniformly is, is the way that it's ended up. Because now, I mean, going through the years, uh, we moved past 67, but then they also passed laws in 1974, 1976, and 1994, which expanded the, uh, the roles and power of the Met Council to include not only wastewater, but transit and parks and just about anything else that, that you could handle. Housing. Or, uh, housing to, to coordinate on a, uh, mass scale how to make these things look and they make uh, each city submit redevelopment plans and wastewater plans and we'll go through this stuff later mm -hmm. but this is how they get control over the cities is because they'll uh, they'll make them submit a plan they have to approve the plan and then uh, once it's if they refuse to follow the Met Council's edicts on, on how to get it done there are also financial uh, penalties that can accrue as well. Well, and denying of grant money, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. You know, and, and that, you mentioned something about taking away local control. You know, and, and we hear a lot from people locally talking about local control. A lot of cities, a lot of people don't know this, they actually have legislative agendas, you yeah. know, that they would like to see. Like, usually it centers around getting free money mm -hmm. from the state government. But I'd like to, I'd like a question here. How come uh, where is a group like the League of Minnesota Cities? I mean, these these champions of local control who whine and complain. They're the biggest crybabies on earth. And yet, where are they when it comes to getting rid of the Met Council? They're sitting there with their thumbs up their butt doing nothing. It's not on their agenda. It's never, they never talk about it. All they do is come to the legislature and get free money. If they're interested in local control, mm -hmm. you know, the Association of Metropolitan Municipalities, yes. you won't find opposing the Met Council anywhere in their agenda. No, that's not it. I mean, really, they're there to lobby the legislature, and that's it. Uh, but yet, if they were going after the Met Council, I, that would provide so much more local control. Because the way that the council is set up, 
uh, there are 17 spots on the board. There are 16 that are over a certain geographical area and one at large. That's the chair. Uh, th that's the chair. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, but when you say at large, it makes you think, oh, so they're running in all the different districts. Well, no, nobody runs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're appointed by the governor, and then they're appointed by the new governor uh, every time we have a new governor. So it's it has nothing to do with, oh, we're sending these people to represent us because we don't send them. They're appointed at the leisure of the governor, and it's really only him or her that this person is accountable to uh, in, in each chair. Well, and, and that brings up something else. I mean, it, the legislature and the governor, forget who they are for a minute, because it, since 1967 it hasn't mattered. Mm -hmm. When you give authority to a third party, an unelected third party, it is a dereliction of our elected officials' duties. Mm -hmm. They are derelict in their duty, and all they do is whine and complain about it. And I mean, I've heard legislators, you know, complain about the Met Council. It's like, wait a minute, you have the power. You have the power of funding. The governor has the, could a governor refuse to appoint a Met Council, hypothetically? Uh I mean, I don't know. They, yeah, they I've, I've, I've talked with people running for governor. I've talked with people in the legislature. And, you know, that I've had them tell me, yeah, I'd love to get rid of the Met Council. Well, here's the thing. I mean, until we change the laws surrounding that, I mean, we really can't. Yeah. I mean, funding is kind of an interesting issue because there's no law that says you have to give this much to the Met Council. True. It's, there's I, not a formula like there is for education or mm -hmm. local government aid that they'd have to go in there and change. Right. But, I mean, they get their money from a lot of different places. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, Ain't that the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all of ours. So, really, it's not a lot of different places. Mm. It's just us. But how that is is directed and redirected to them is kind of interesting. Well, and, and you talk about them getting their money directly from us. One of the ways they get money is property taxes. Yes. You know, now, now our founding fathers or founding persons, I'm sorry, um, for those of you who, you know, American history is not a foreign concept, literally declared, I mean, the Stamp Act was one of the biggest things that yes. uh, catalyst the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. um, things like taxation without representation. Um, this is uh, like Stamp Acts on steroids. I yes. mean, the fact that, and, and I would say the same thing with our watershed commissions, mm -hmm. all those things are taxed on your property taxes. They, yes, they all get, and your property taxes go six, seven, eight different places when you include the railroad authorities mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And we are literally being taxed property tax money, $71 million worth of property tax money going to the Met Council. And it, it, it's going to do nothing but grow because all they're doing is expanding what they're doing, growing what they're doing, and their power is unchecked. You know, it's not like the next election can come and we say, hey, we don't like what's going on, mm -hmm. vote somebody else in. Oh, no, 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 no. Transit goes on until the sun goes down over heaven, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> and, and that's what's really interesting. I mean, when you think about it, no matter who the governor has been to appoint the Met Council, whether it was Arnie Carlson or Jesse Ventura or Minnesota. Tim Pawlenty or, or Mark Dayton, I mean, we've got what three different parties yeah. that, that are represented there but yet the vision and direction of the Met Council has been the same all the way through to consolidate power to grow government to grow uh, control over uh, the region's transportation systems and water management systems and and development of, of communities and what it really you know one of the things that they want to destroy is the individuality Mm -hmm. of cities you know it, we've talked about this on shows do you see the same development happening everywhere do you see roundabouts being put in everywhere do you see bike lanes being put in everywhere mm -hmm. do you think that's a coincidence no it's all regionally planned and I can tell you firsthand uh, being on Crystal's Planning Commission and learning a lot over the past couple months um, we have to the Met Council submits housing goals to cities yes. and says, okay, you need to add 500 houses, city of Jason Bradley. Add it. And we want to see it on your comprehensive plan. We don't care if your residents want it or not. That's the least of their concerns. We don't care if you don't have the land. We don't care if you have to get it. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you free money if you develop the way we want you to develop. Now, 
Is that how this country is supposed to be run? I mean, it, what, what happened? What happened? I, you just, I, I'm being a little uh, nostalgic here, but, but there was a time in this, in this country where you talk about something like the Homestead Act, yeah. where we, our goal was to get people to be landowners, yes. to have their own land, to graze their own land. We don't want this on the public dole. Mm -hmm. We want that American dream. Okay, where in 151 years has that gone? It, it's gone into <laughs> bringing people into smaller and smaller spaces. Yes. I mean, I had the privilege, and, and this is uh, being a guy with community solutions here, that I, I have the privilege of sitting down with people from different communities and talking to them about what's going on in their community. Uh, yeah, if I could just put in a little plug. I mean, if you want someone to come to your community and talk to you about what your city's doing, please uh, contact us. I mean, you can email Andrew or whatever, and we'll get on it. I had the privilege of sitting down with uh, Independence, Minnesota, a while ago, and not the city council, but some people <laughs> who were kind of concerned about some of the things that they were seeing. And I was able to look into their redevelopment plan. And right now, I mean, Independence is a small little city, for those of you that don't know, out out west, uh, if you take what um, 12, twelve yeah. and and go west uh, out past Wyzetta and in that direction, you'll eventually run into uh, Independence. So, what happened is is I looked through their redevelopment plan, and uh, right now they have zero units of high density housing. I mean, it's a small community; it's rural. Yeah. There's really no call for it. By 2030, their redevelopment plan calls for having 60 units of high-density housing. Now, that to me uh, seems odd in a very rural community. And Isn't that why you move out there? Yeah, that's the why you move place? out there. That's why these people moved out there. They were yeah. confused. They couldn't believe it that that was in their plan, right there in their city documents that they could find on their city website. Now, are they under the Met Council still out there? They are... I thought that was Wright County, but maybe it, I'm it's wrong. not Wright County. It's oh, Hennepin it's County. Oh, it's still then, It's no. Hennepin County, but it's not under the Met Council's taxing district because they don't have they have septics instead of of uh, uh, sewer that, systems. Yeah, I know they, the name for you know, them. and yeah. and they have uh, no Met or no mass transit or anything like that. But let me tell you. You get 60 high density units out there, and oh, we've got to have a way to get these people to work. All of a sudden, they're going to have some hookup with, uh, be with, with mass transit. transit. And what that's going to do then is open the door for them to become part of the taxing district so that they have to pay taxes, they have the mass transit, and then they can start developing a, a sewer and water transit. system. Around well, the transit. They'll develop too. around the transit and they'll be able to put in the sewer and water systems and then tax for that as well. And you don't think that's going to happen? Deep Haven has had nothing but uh, uh, septics. And all of a sudden, now they're starting to go to sewer and water on the city. And right now, it's optional, from what I understand. Yeah, but, but they're we moving all know toward making it mandatory. We all know when government says something op is optional. It's only until they get it in. It's B as in B, S as in S. That's what we know. <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as option. If it's optional, then there should be no consequences for whatever you choose. And we all know that there is. So it's yeah. nonsense to say it's for them to say it's optional. But, you know, and, and that just goes to show how big the Met Council's reach is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking out to Independence, or not quite that far, yeah. going all the way down to, say, Lakeville, or even mm -hmm. further, going all the way up to the border of Sherburn County by yep. uh, Elk River there, and then going all the way east out to, like, Woodbury. It goes and, out to the river, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, almost to the Wisconsin. I don't know yeah. if Stillwater, yeah, the Washington County. They, yeah. I think they are. So, I mean, it is just the reach of this, I mean, this is far bigger than any county, any city, and they've got, they really have more authority than the legislature, if you think about it, because you think about the legislative process. You know, if you want a bill, say you want an education bill out there. I mean, let's just pretend. Uh, it starts in the House, if it's spending, with the Education Finance Committee, because mm -hmm. there's two committees in the House for education. Then it passes out of the committee, goes to the House floor. There might be a sister bill in the Senate, or a companion bill yeah. then they both pass something they have a conference committee 
to go past it again. Mm -hmm. It's got to get past the governor. It's got to get past judicial review, whatever. There's a million different steps before an idea becomes law. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, laws aren't supposed to be easy to pass. Our freedom's not supposed to be easy to take away. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the Met Council, I mean, if nine out of 17 people, you know, just decide, well, we're going to have the orange line or the green line or the turquoise line of transit. Yeah. Um, there is no process. You can come and talk occasionally if you can make their 4 p.m. in the afternoon meetings. Yes. You know, but you have no recourse against something that is being pushed by the Met Council. None. Mm -hmm. We can't say that enough times. Yeah, a perfect example of that. Uh, a few years ago, they were doing some uh, inspections here in the city. Well, they wanted to replace all the water meters, first off. The satellite. They yeah. I had that done in my house, yep, too. Yeah, I <laughs> did, too, eventually. But I delayed it a little bit because <laughs> I, I want to find out a little Dude. bit more. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm naughty. a troublemaker, <laughs> aren't I? I'm, a, I'm an anarchist, apparently. Yeah, I've, I've been called. You're an anarchist, then I'm, it, it, I'm even to a different scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I decided I'm going to check this out a little bit more because they wanted to come in and, and have their, whoever was replacing the water meters, do a mandatory foot drain and, footing drain and sump pump inspection. And I'm like, uh, nobody's going to inspect my house without a warrant. Yeah, there's this, there's this little thing called the Fourth Amendment somewhere that I, somewhere. I think still exists. Yeah. I, well, it says that, you know, you should be secure in all your personal items, your papers, and your, you know, the, to be free from searches without m Maybe without it warrant. went, maybe the second and ninth yeah. and tenth, you know, kind of all went out with the fourth at some point. I, do we still have the third? <laughs> do they, oh, do they quarantining make you a, a quartering soldiers? I don't think so. I, no, I, I haven't had any stay with me lately. No, the only people who knock on my doors are the Mormons, and they're all named Elder. I just don't understand it. Mm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've had a bunch of people looking to repair my roof after this storm. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> crisis to crisis. No. Anyhow. You, Anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, I pressed it as long as I could, but basically... Short, long story short, this is what I was told. The Met Council was going to fine the city of Crystal if they did not have 100% compliance to do these inspections. And so it was like, well, you can feel free to continue to refuse, or we're just going to shut off your water and, and disconnect you. You know, you're going to have to build a septic tank. So you'll have to have a well and a septic tank. Well, the funny thing is, I had a well when I moved into my home, supposedly. I mean, that was one of the selling points, and I found out it was capped after I moved in. So, <laughs> well, I, and, and I to have a well, untap, not have a well. Yeah, and to untap yeah. your well, I'm sure you got to pay the city a bunch of permit fees, <laughs> even though they don't do anything. Yeah, so, right. but you know, you can't do anything without paying a fee. But yeah, well, I mean, the moral of that story is the Met Council will make the cities do whatever they want through whatever means necessary. Well, and it's where we really need some people, and uh, we we've talked about this on shows, running in local offices who, uh, you know, are going to stand up for their city first, people on commissions who are you know, not just going to rubber stamp whatever is paid for by somebody else. People understand there's no such thing as free money. You know, it's not free to a city just because the Met Council's paying for it. That's our money too, and I think that perspective is also lost. And, and you know, here's another thing about the Met, you want some facts about the Met Council? They have an army, I'm gonna call it an army, of 3,700 employees. 3,700 employees. I mean, that's bigger than practically any school district, any, I mean, uh, 3,700 employees. They get federal money. They get state money. They get, where the hell is that? They get, I don't know where it went. They get, uh, you know, money for environmental services, for um, planning and administration. They get money from transit fares. Oh, you want to hear about transit fares? Um, we get we, the Hiawatha Light Rail. Now, I've talked about this on this show, but of course, we have to keep reiterating this. has total expenses. Uh, I don't have figures for 2012. Um, 
government will get those out, I'm sure, by 2071. Uh, but total expense is nearly $26 million in total expenses. You know how much is paid for by passenger fares? About 30%. You're pretty close. Yeah. About $10 million yeah. comes from passenger fares. Now, you might say, well, where the, does the rest of it come from? County Transit Improvement Board? Mm hmm state appropriations, motor, motor vehicle sales taxes. Yeah. So your sales taxes are being, you know, the whole reason we had a gas tax and a license tab fees was it was supposed to work like a user fee. Right. You know, the people who drove paid for the roads and bridges. Yeah. Now that money is being diverted to go to the Met Council and to go to transit. Uh, North Star, even worse, if that's possible. <laughs> uh, total expenses. Uh, about $14 million to operate, about 2.6 comes mm. in from passenger fares. And they've lowered passenger fares, which just means we're subsidizing it more. Yeah. But I mean, just think. I mean, just think that's with, you know, $4 a gallon gas. Yeah. You know, and people still aren't taking it. I mean, mm -hmm. and why is the response to build more? I'll tell you why. Because they don't have to answer to you. Right. And, I mean, it doesn't just stop with the transit either. No. It is, the Hiawatha line, I mean, they're rebuilding that area like it's gangbusters. I mean, with, with all the, the little shops and the uh, high-density housing that they're putting in. I know somebody whose sister lives out that way, and I keep getting told, oh, she's had like four break-ins within the last six months. And it, it's not turning into a good area. It, it's not, it never really was. But it's an industrial area. It's an area. industrial area. And then the housing over the side, I mean, it's a lot of rentals, a lot of low income housing, which is fine. I mean, you know. There's a spot for that. In absolutely. But you're trying to put all this stuff in to bring in customers and to, to bring in people to live in the area. And it's not a place people want to live. Well, and I would take it another way. It's not market forces. Yeah. I mean, you can't force people to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, if people really wanted to move there, they would have already, they, they'd do it regardless of if there was transit or not. Right. I mean, who moves somewhere because there's light rail? Yeah. I mean, I want to move out before light right. rail comes, Right. not in. And, you know, who's selling their car and saying, hey, you know, and, and here's another thing. You add something to it about transit. Um, most people don't live downtown and work in the suburbs anymore. I mean, isn't that really the truth? That yeah. a lot of people work suburb to suburb. Yeah. Yet it's all taken us down. Why does everything go downtown? Everything goes downtown. And then how do you get out to your job in the suburbs? You you don't. <laughs> well, um, you have to drive from suburb to suburb. I mean, if or that's one of their park and rides. What about their park and rides? Well, you, know? you could, I guess, <laughs> uh, carpool. You know. Well, but, but I mean, here's the thing: if you live in Brooklyn Park and you work in Edina, yeah, the only way you can get there by bus is to go downtown, right? Yep. Get on a different bus if you can, and go yeah. back out. And that, that's a big if. I mean, the way the Metro Transit has their bus system set up, uh, about 90% of the buses go in in the morning and then go out in the afternoon, and you can't find but a handful of buses that go during the day. But that's, and, but that's another thing. I mean, why can't we just take buses and reroute them as people change where they work? Well, I mean, that doesn't you're cost... asking a lot of government, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. It always hurts when they think, doesn't it? Yeah. But I understand where you're going with yeah. that. You know, to be able to, to anticipate what people's demands are based on, on monitoring traffic and where are the shifts at and then being able to say, hey, we need to send at least one bus maybe from the park and ride in Maple Grove down to uh, the park and ride in Burnsville and we're going to make stops in Edina and, you know, St. Louis Park along the way, and then uh, we've got it, you know, figured out where we can transport some people that way. But but, but doesn't that make planning such a pain in the arse? Because I mean, how do <laughs> yeah. you how do you build something? And it I mean, think about it like this. I mean, if, if we did a thirty year plan in the nineteen eighties, mm -hmm. okay, how in the world could we accurately plan for two thousand thirteen? Yeah. I mean, at best. These people are taking guesses. Oh, and that's exactly it, because we're expected by the Met Council to get uh, 
a huge increase in people moving here, but yet the census indicates that we've had people moving out of here, we, and we they're came, still planning for growth. We came this close to losing a congressional seat, you know, our representation mm -hmm. in Washington, which right. if it's Keith Ellison is fine with me. But, I mean, this, <laughs> and we're going to, if trends the way they are, yeah. we're going to lose a seat in 2020. Yeah. And here's my question, though. Where is the factual evidence that backs up what they're saying? Because you and I live in Crystal. Yes. Okay. Crystal has not gained in population in two generations. No, it's um, lost. Golden Valley has not. Robbinsdale has not. Yep. And yet they are forecasting. I mean, I'm on the Planning Commission. They're forecasting Crystal to gain 3,000 residents by 2030. And I'm like, who the hell would even dream that that's the truth? Yeah, it, it's just not going to happen. Now, granted, housing market's turning around a little bit. We're seeing some of these properties being bought up by, by people restoring houses and putting them back out on the market. But I'll tell you the truth, the houses that they're restoring, I have yet to see start selling. Hmm. Well, maybe the, they're, they restore it and they want too much money for it is that probably part of it. But I, I just, I, re, planning is such a difficult thing. And, you know, I'm a free market guy. You know, mm -hmm. I think that there's just certain things that government can't foresee and can't plan and shouldn't be planning. Oh, and, I mean, and that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's, it's, you know, is, had you ever see a conversation between two legislators or two people on any type of planning saying, you know what, we're planning on 2,000 people being entered. Well, you know, should we be doing this in the first place? If 2,000 people want to move here, won't mm -hmm. the market conditions react to that well if shame and prudence were you know <laughs> were part of, of government thought I mean we'd be in a lot of places we weren't in right yeah, we now, wouldn't have an income know. tax <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have the Federal Reserve yeah. no sorry to get off subject but yeah. but that's the thing I mean and, and we see it across the board the general tendency of government has been growth over the last 100 years since 1913, it has been just a straight J-curve. Yeah. No doubt about it. But, I mean, you know, so let, let me ask you something, Jason. I mean, what, what, what do you think? I mean, we talk a lot about community solutions, about local governments, local neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think is, is the best way or if I'm a citizen that wants to oppose the Met Council or oppose something specific that they're doing, what's my best route to take to do that? Well, uh, they do have their, what, 2 o'clock in the afternoon meetings on a weekday where you can go and spit into the wind and hope that they yeah. hear you. Or <laughs> uh, the best way is to get on some sort of environmental commission, a planning commission within your city, because then you can have a voice and say, here's the way that I think it should be. And there are cities that have been successful who have little bit of a backbone that have pushed back at the Met Council and I think there are areas where we can do it and areas where we can put pressure on uh, our local representatives uh, to say hey you represent our cities we want this to change in the Met Council and then to be able to go bring that forward and legislatively change the direction that the council is going. Well hopefully we gave some some good, you know, tips, and you can Google this stuff and look at all this stuff for yourself. Come to your own conclusion and get out there, and we want local control. We love our cities. We want them to stay the way they are. We don't want the Met Council's garbage yeah. forced down our throat. That's a wrap for another show, number 177, in the can.